Our next speaker is Ted Cox. He, is, he garnered international media attention for his undercover reporting on gay to straight therapy programs. He's a journalist who frequently covers religion. Ted has toured the country speaking to packed rooms about ex-gay programs, the Mormon temple ceremonies, the pro-life movement, and various other forms of religious quackery and wankery. He contributes to a number of print and online publications and blogs at iHeartCox, C-O-X, don't use another spelling please, dot com. He is also a member of the SSA Speakers Bureau. Please join me in giving a very warm welcome to the final speaker of this convention, Ted Cox. Give me a second here, I've got a... Sorry, I have notes. Uh, before getting started, I would sincerely, deeply, from the bottom of my heart, thank the SSA for the opportunity to follow David Silverman. Thanks a lot. As you can see, um, I hate coming up with speech titles for a lot of uh, speakers and writers coming up with a title for something that's like the most difficult part. Um, for a while, I was thinking of, instead of a wrap-up speech, maybe I could just troll you guys a little bit um, and uh, do a fake speech about how I actually got converted on a Saturday night, but uh, it didn't work out. Uh, I, I love these conferences, they're a lot of fun. I like that we can poke fun at these ridiculous concepts and, and not be afraid of pissing someone off. And in a way, going home at the end of something like this is sad, you get to see your friends. And for a lot of the people that I met in the SSA, I am closer to you than I am to some members of my family. So, you know, going home will be hard for some of us. Uh, for some more than others, it'll be hard going home. <laughs> For others, it'll be a good time to be out of here. Anyway, um, today what I'd really like to talk about is keeping in mind the bigger picture. Um, in my line of work, I have to read the news a lot, and there's nothing like reading the news a lot to remind you why we need a secular movement. Um, and so, for this afternoon, I'd like to go through some of the big news events of just the past year or so so that we can all get a look at the bigger picture. Let's start with April of last year, when the National Women's Law Center reported that across the country, pharmacists in 24 states had denied women access to birth control or emergency contraception. And these pharmacists are denying women this basic, necessary health care, largely because of their own religious objections to contraception. I bet they have no problem prescribing Viagra because they're dicks. <laughs> you will when you're in. In May, we learned more about American evangelical groups pouring money into Africa, creating organizations and supporting pastors that incite violence and discrimination against the gay community because they're losing the battle here. They're going somewhere else. In Washington State, where I live, we are seeing the results of the anti-vaccination movement, where parents refusing to vaccinate their children have helped create the worst whooping cough epidemic in 70 years. And what's especially sad about this is that a lot of these parents think they're right because they're following the advice of a trained scientist with years of clinical research experience. We are not just anti-faith, no, no, no. We are anti-bullshit. Yes. In October, an Indian dentist living in Ireland was suffering a miscarriage after about 17 weeks of pregnancy. Now, even though the fetus was not viable, she was told that doctors could not perform an abortion because Ireland is a Catholic country. As she worsened, she was diagnosed with septicemia, leading to painful multiple organ failure and eventually her death. 
In January of this year, a group of religious business owners sued the U.S. government, saying that part of the Affordable Care Act mandating that they provide birth control coverage violates their religious rights. Listen to this quote. Our family is now being forced to choose between following the laws of the land that we love or maintaining the religious beliefs that have made our business su successful and have supported our family and thousands of our employees and their families. That was said by someone without a uterus. <laughs> In some parts of the United States, and this should scare all of you, secular hospitals with money problems are starting to merge with Catholic healthcare providers. And they are creating systems where Catholic beliefs are interfering with legal and necessary public access to abortion, birth control, and end-of-life health care. If you have a directive saying that you don't want to be plugged into a machine, they'll probably plug you into a machine. These systems are supported by taxpayer dollars, but they operate under Catholic doctrine. In May of this year, last month, a Philadelphia couple was charged with the murder of their eight-month-old son because when their son got sick, they decided to pray instead of taking him to a doctor, and their son died. And what makes this story truly sickening is that three years ago, the same couple was convicted of manslaughter because when their two-year-old son got sick, instead of going to a doctor, they prayed, and their son died. Earlier this month, a study found that legislative efforts to address climate change would be politically futile because so many Americans believe in the second coming. I mean, basically, they believe, why do I have to recycle if Jesus is coming back tomorrow? That was my prop a bit. <laughs> also this month, a law in Iran would keep stoning as a penalty for adultery, a punishment used mainly against women. Now, as I read this article, I actually found out there is an upside to this stoning law. You can actually get out of it. Um, what I learned is that before the stoning begins, they uh, dig a pit in the ground, and the person is put in the pit and then partially buried, and the stoning begins. If you're able to get out of the pit and escape, you're, you're forgiven. That there's actually a way out of this. Of course, men are buried up to their waists, and women are buried up to their shoulders. It, sometimes it does really feel like we are living in the dark ages. And it's really depressing to realize that the health and well-being of billions of people are at risk, partly because some people believe we got here because of a talking snake. And so this is what I'm talking about when it comes to bigger picture stuff. This movement cannot be just about creating clever memes or winning internet debates about the Bible. I mean, yes, memes and the internet and debates, they do have their place, but we have to remember the bigger picture, and there are bigger issues that we need to address. Working in the secular movement is tough. We fight amongst ourselves, it can get frustrating. Some of you have that one special group member that can be a little bit difficult. I know, I've met a lot of them. <laughs> and besides doing all the work you do for the SSA, you have your schoolwork, you have your jobs, you have internships. You have to balance all of that with your personal life. But what I'm really getting at here is there's also a flip side to this bigger picture thing. It's easy to get depressed when you look at all these news stories. It's easy to get down and just look at the bad and think that maybe humanity is totally doomed. But it's really important not to give up. So here's the flip side. Let's not forget the other part of the bigger picture. Let's look at how far we have come. And I'd like to look again at news articles of just the past year. We have nuns starting to defy the Catholic Church. In April of last year, the Vatican cracked down against a group of nuns who had been critical of the church's positions on women and gays. And I love this line from the article. The Vatican also rebuked the nuns for spending too much time promoting issues of social justice. I'm sorry, nuns, you're helping too many people. <laughs> what would Jesus do indeed? In May of 2012, President Obama came out in support of gay marriage. In September of 2012, Nicolas Cage, a 
announced that he'd be starring in the film Joe. Now you might be asking yourselves, what does Nicolas Cage starring in this film have to do with the secular movement? Not a damn thing, I just really love Nicolas Cage. <laughs> In November, the Pew Forum announced that more than 46 million, million Americans now identify with no religion. Now, that doesn't mean that they're all necessarily atheists or agnostic or something like that. Some of them are spiritual or they have some other belief in God. But what this means is that 46 million people are going down that list of beliefs and at the end checking none of the above. That is a big number. Also in November, and another show of how the religious diversity of this country is changing in November, the first Buddhists and Hindu were elected to Congress. And Representative Mendez was right. You know, we need to get more into politics. Let's keep up the trend of adding diversity to Congress. I know we have a couple of non-believers in Congress already, at least, but we could always use a couple more, right? In March of this year, scientists announced that they had detected the Higgs boson particle one of the missing pieces of subatomic stuff. Something. I'm not going to pretend that I understand particle physics, liberal arts major. But from what I understand, this was very big news. And then in May of this year, the Pope said that even atheists can get into heaven. Come on, it doesn't excite you guys? I mean, hey, it was a nice thing to say. Okay, obviously, you know, talking about heaven doesn't mean a lot to this group. And yes, the Vatican later said, no, the Pope is wrong. <laughs> but when you consider how the church used to treat non-believers, I'm like, hey, it's progress. And it seems like every month a new poll comes out showing how now a majority of Americans support gay marriage. Last week, the government announced that emergency contraception known as Plan B would finally be available to all women of all ages without a prescription. Last week, education officials in Kansas, good old anti-evolution Kansas, announced that evolution and climate change would be taught as fact in public school. In Mormon land, aka Utah, the land of my people, Two Boy Scout leaders got in trouble because they marched in the local gay pride parade while dressed in their uniforms. They were so nice, though. Yeah. <laughs> look, how, look at how ordinary people are standing up for equality. And just four days ago, the world's largest organization for gay to straight ministries, Exodus International, announced that it was voluntarily shutting itself down. As a lot of you know, I've done a lot of work on gay to straight programs, and a lot of people have asked me what I think about it. Um, I do believe it's good news, but just between us, I'm a little pissed off because now I have to rewrite a lot of that speech. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. So, to finish up, remember the bigger picture. There's going to be more bad news. More stupid pastors or preachers doing stupid things. People for many years to come will lose their lives or their health to pseudoscience and dogma. But leaving the conference today, you'll also have problems with your groups. You'll have problems with your school. Reddit will go down. <laughs> Remember this. There may be bad news today, but there will be better news tomorrow. So when things go bad, just do this. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> just do this. You guys are awesome. Thank you for coming out this afternoon. Go home, sir.